Welcome to Understanding the EKG and Heart Rate. You can find this on pages 74, 75, 76 in your Nurse Workbook 2.0. We're actually gonna be combining a couple pages, so my screen might look a little different than yours, but this is gonna help us learn together. The purpose of this video is to provide you with much more education than the workbook alone, but to provide you with real world nursing education as well. And this video is gonna be quite lengthy, but it's gonna build our foundations of not just understanding the EKG and the heart rates, but what do those waves on the paper mean? And then if you can stick with me on this and follow all the way through, you're going to be much more proficient in anything cardiac than a lot of people out there. So let's get started. And we're gonna do a tiny anatomy review of what we're looking at. So if this is our cardiac heart, and you remember from prior videos that we're always looking down at the heart. So this side is going to be our right side and this side is gonna be our left side. And we see our right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. And the reason for this line right here is to make the distinction that these atria are gonna contract bilaterally at the same time. So they're gonna push blood into these ventricles. And the ventricles on the left and right will contract together to push blood out of the heart, whether that is to the lungs or the rest of the body. So we can think of this as these being our atrias and these are our ventricles. So they're gonna contract at the same time. So what makes this heart initially beat and squeeze? Well, the answer to that is gonna be electricity. Little node right here that sits up at the top of the right atrium called the sinoatrial node or commonly called and recognized as the SA node. And this little node sits on top of the right atrium. And more specifically, it sits at the junction of where the superior vena cava enters the right atrium. And this SA node is known as our heart's natural pacemaker because the cells that live in it generate electrical impulses that initiate each heartbeat and they control that heart rate. And these impulses cause our atria to contract that pushes blood into our ventricles. And this contraction becomes the first wave that we're gonna see on our EKG paper. So this first contraction is gonna be known as our P wave. And then these electrical impulses are gonna reach our AV node or our atrioventricular node. And this is gonna be located in the lower part of the right atrium near the center of the heart. And this AV node is going to briefly delay the electrical signal before passing it on. And this delay is known as the PR segment, which we can see right here after our P wave. So this line is what represents that AV node delay. And the reason for the delay is so our ventricles have enough time to fill up with blood from the contracting atria so they can contract and send the blood out. So then this little delay is going to pass through this AV node and it's gonna transmit this impulse to the bundle of Hiss. And then it's gonna to go to the left and right Purkinje fibers, which then spread the impulse through the ventricles and causes them to contract and pump blood to the lungs and rest of the body. And this ventricular contraction produces the classic up-down wave known as our QRS complex. And then this line right here is what represents the PR interval. So this is measuring the distance from our start of the atria contraction up to the start of the ventricular contraction. And so you might be catching on that these little lines right here are essentially a measurement of time. So when we put this on the actual EKG piece of paper with all the little squares on it, we'll be able to make sure that everything is measuring how it should. And if it isn't, we'll be able to see where exactly because of these lapses or distance or delays that we're gonna see in these segments or intervals. And then after our ventricles contract, we're gonna see this little line right here. And this is gonna be our ST segment. So this is the time delay between the ventricles finishing the contraction and the start of the recovery. Oftentimes I like to think of the ST segment almost as if somebody jumps out at you. So when they jump out at you, you're gonna have that initial fear, kind of panic, thinking like, what the heck? Is there a threat? Is something wrong? And then finally you start to kind of get your bearings and you calm down and you realize that everything is actually totally fine. So it's the calm down. So after that contraction, 
is that ST segment or after that jump I just had from somebody jumping out at me, now I'm calming down, I'm realizing, I'm collecting my bearings, everything is okay. So then we have our QT interval. And this is gonna be what we measure from the onset of the QRS to the end of the T wave or that ventricular contraction and relaxation. And then we can see this is all the way the end of our T wave. This T wave is gonna be right here. And what is the T wave? And this T wave represents the ventricles recovering from the beat and releasing energy from the electrical impulse to prepare for the next cycle. We'll see our T wave right there. Well, did we just talk about how we were already calming down from the contraction? So that ST was that initial calm down. Well, now we can almost think of the T wave almost as if I've collected my bearings, I've calmed down, I realize there's no threat. And then eventually you're gonna hit this point where you've completely recovered from that. You've calmed down from being scared and now I'm actually ready and I'm totally vulnerable again for anyone to jump back out at me. So once I'm in that neutral relaxed state, I'm ready to be frightened again without thinking about it. So that's kind of the same thing. That T wave is full recovery, so that way it's ready for the next contraction. But to make this easier, there's actually two terms that we should understand, and that's depolarization and repolarization. So depolarization is essentially that contraction, and repolarization is that relaxation. So now we're gonna move into our EKG paper and why these tiny squares are so incredibly important to us. So we're gonna start off with this block of boxes right here. We're gonna call this whole thing a six second rhythm strip. And because this is going to represent six seconds of time that the cardiac waves are being recorded, this is gonna help us see the rate and rhythm of the heart at that moment. So we're also gonna see that there are gonna be black little marks inside this rhythm strip. And what this is, is this is our monitor essentially ticking that every three seconds is going by. So this mark to this mark indicates three seconds as that mark to this mark represents three seconds. So in total, this is our six second rhythm strip. And if we look closer, there are some shades of reddish pink here on these boxes. And some of these lines are darker than others. And this is because it's also help representing time. So these two thicker lines right here help us see quickly that there are five medium boxes in a row. So this block is going to represent one full second because these five medium boxes are one second. And each QRS complex is gonna represent that ventricular contraction or one full heartbeat. So we can count how many beats we see and then multiply this by 10 to get how many beats are in a minute. And since we have six heartbeats here, we multiply that by 10 and this rate is gonna be 60 beats per minute. So let's break this down even more. We know that five of these medium boxes represent one full second. And when we zoom even further into one single medium box, this is actually gonna represent 0.2 fractions of a second in time. And each small box within the medium box is going to be 0.04 fractions of a second. So we're gonna put this all together and see what kind of electrical measurements we aim for in a nice, normal, regular heartbeat that has no problems or issues. So we just learned that this is our P wave, our QRS complex, the T wave already, and now we're gonna go over those intervals and segments we just learned about. So this PR interval is going to represent the onset of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. So this is typically going to be 0.12 to 0.20 fractions of a second. And if we look here, we can see about three and one third or three and a half boxes. Well, if one box we see here is 0.04 fractions of a second, so 0.04 times 3.5 equals 0.14. So this falls right into the range of our normal PR interval. And our PR segment up here represents that AV node slowing down that impulse and receives it from the SA node before it sends it down the ventricles. Well, there isn't a standard normal length for a PR segment itself. We do, however, see the PR segment changes in certain types of heart conditions. 
such as heart blocks or maybe a delay to blocking of the impulse activity. But we'll go into that later. And if we look at the QRS complex, it's consistent with its three points. You have your Q, your R, your S. And if you remember, this is the big wave when those ventricles contract. That contraction is super fast. And we normally see this duration between 0.08 to 0.1 fractions of a second. The ST segment is much like our PR segment that we don't necessarily measure the length of it. However, this ST segment's appearance, such as any elevation, depression, slope, or shape that is derived from baseline, can be a main sign of our acute coronary syndrome symptoms, such as a myocardial infarction or any ischemia present. And the QT interval is gonna be the start of that ventricular contraction from the AV node, sending the impulse down. And then at the end, it's that repolarization or reset while it gets ready for the next beat. And we like to see this QT interval between 0.32 and 0.43 seconds. And as a bonus here, there are two things we can mention that you typically never see or hear in a practice. And this is going to be that RR interval. This is essentially just measuring the distance between the peaks of the QRS complex, so R to R. And the RR interval we typically see between 0.6 and 1 second. And this little baby wave that we see right here is known as our U wave. And it doesn't often have any clinical significance to healthy patients, but in certain cases, this U wave being present or changes in size or shape can be indicative of an electrolyte imbalance such as hypokalemia or low potassium or even hypercalcemia or high calcium or heart disease. And then we're gonna learn a quick, easy heart rate counting tip before we go. So if we look at our EKG right here, we wanna find a QRS peak that's going to be close to these thicker lines. So in between these five boxes, remember we have these thicker lines right here. So this QRS is pretty much as close as we're gonna get. Then what we could do from this point is label the medium thickness lines from there, so we're gonna start 300, 175, 150, 75, 60, and 50. So these numbers will never change. You can go ahead and use these six lines right here and label it across. Now, if we look at the next QRS, we can actually see it's landing right here. It's landing in between our 150 and 175. So if we look at the actual peak, it's pretty close to this 150 mark. So I'm gonna guess it's about 130. So because this peak is here and this one's here, and we did our appropriate numbers below, we can safely say this is about 130 beats per minute. I hope that helps. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to print the pages below this video so you can always come back and test your knowledge again. That's it for our understanding EKGs and heart rates. I will see you in the next cardiac lesson.